y'all uh random thoughts here and i had received a question on my day in the life sre video and i figured i would just start well, actually quite a few questions <laughs> but i think i would start uh just making videos off of some of these questions um helping some of these people um maybe helping myself understand some of these things a bit more <laughs> so let's just dive right into it Uh, so the first uh, question that I kind of want to review in video format is uh, someone asked me um, from a more of a beginner's perspective, uh, you know, what they can expect from maybe like a junior SRE position, uh, you know, SRE entry level ish type kind of role. Um, so I gave a response, but I also wanted to make a video response. Um, and this is not highlighting the interview process itself, the broken process, the culture behind that kind of stuff. This is just strictly like the technical stuff to prepare for. So for site reliability engineering, um, one of the things you can expect is just to be able to define SLAs, SLOs, and SLIs. Uh, so that's, that's something right there. And that of course relates to the context of, and really the definition of as to what site reliability engineering is at that organization. Um, and this is specific mostly to small to medium sized organizations because a lot of these shops are kind of in that space back in the day, I guess, I'm old now, <laughs> where uh, testers kind of became more of an automated role and they kind of started, you know, borrowing terms from larger companies like SDAT and, you know, and ESET and all of these kinds of things. Uh, so, you know, at the end of the day, it really is what the company you're applying to defines it as. Uh, so that's a big, big thing, right? Like a lot of people can be uh, DevOps engineers, is, is a good example of this. And then, you know, as I, as I had mentioned before, they wave their magic wand and, you know, all suddenly they're, you know, site reliability engineers, you know, without properly understanding, you know, what that was defined as and really you know it's a role that emerged from google as far as i know <laughs> this is emerged from google and uh you know it's just really i mean it's an amazing role you know it's just defined it's it's scientific to a degree <laughs> but you know at the same time what works at a large company might not work well likely won't work at a small company unless you properly define it and really build that process out uh, as I've learned, you know, in the past with with other things, you know, trying to apply big company ideas at, at uh, small companies, my my entire career uh, has been small to medium sized shops. Uh, so that's all I know, you know, that's so a lot of what I talk about. Keep that in mind. Um, but just getting back into the interview process, kind of went on a bit of a tangent there, um, but I swear it does mean something. Uh, so the other pieces are, I mean, you might receive some devops -y type questions, you know, and what that means is, you know, this, like the infrastructure, the cloud infrastructure, your familiarity with, you know, public clouds, whether it's Azure, Google Cloud, uh, Amazon Web Services, uh, etc. you know, or bare metal, you know, are, are you familiar with data centers or, or bare metal servers or installing Kubernetes in bare metal or, uh, you know, more of the tooling, of course, uh, Kubernetes example, as an example of that. A lot of shops these days are, you know, breaking up their monolith for better or worse <laughs> until they realize the complexities of that, <laughs> you know, and what that means culturally, <laughs> which is a video I'll definitely have to create. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well. And some books I, I you know, have, have either read, skimmed through, or are currently reading. Uh, you know, this is not to say read all of these, just don't do that. <laughs> Some people don't even read books that I've worked with. You know, they read blog posts and <sighs> documentation. <laughs> Always documentation. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's something to uh, to keep in mind. These tooling specific questions. Um, but yeah, yeah, Terraform automation uh, relates relates to these concepts of, of SRE as well. Toil. Uh, are you doing the same tasks over and over and over? What can you do about that? What can you automate uh, in order not to do that? Automate yourself out of a job. Think of it that way. Um, because there's plenty of these jobs out there right now, you know, and that's that's just the reality. Uh, so the other piece here is CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment. I know I threw a ton of acronyms around. I just, if I haven't covered them, either ask in the comments. Um, 
Google, of course, or I'll make a video on them. We can dive into them if there's enough interest. So really with CICD, uh, you know, this automation process, but really understanding the overall software development life cycle. You know, what are you trying to automate? So lately, in the past for me, it's been, you know, test. So that was my background. What tests can we add to the pipeline? Performance, you know, end to end, integration, hopefully mostly integration these days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I once again depending on your context I don't know what what companies are out there what you're doing my background is different um, but uh, these days it's uh, security I guess they call it DevSecOps now <laughs> but my experience with that was adding security tests uh, on our existing um, end to end, end tests uh, and some integration tests as well uh, OWASP is out specifically uh, so you know kind of dive into that understand you know where security and DevSecOps kind of fits into that picture as an SRE DevOps infrastructure person uh you know where can you put those kinds of tests in that pipeline where do they fit how long should they be um there's a lot of really good blog posts about this uh you know kind of doing a deep dive as to what all of this and any of this actually means um so i would understand that in SDL, uh, sdlc um i would also really have an understanding of uh you know have an understanding of the uh overall so, uh, software architecture lost my train of thought there software architecture so monoliths services oriented architecture microservices um, I've been pulled into and involved with all of these kinds of projects understanding you know not only the architecture but each of the pieces that fit inside of there as well uh, you know whether it's a pub sub model whether it's streaming like Kafka and rabbit and Q for examples um, whether or not we could move some services to functions as opposed to microservices so having an understanding of what you know a lambda is or cloud functions you know whatever that public cloud they might use or maybe they're multi-cloud uh, and then kind of you know, defining how you can and how and why really, really why uh, you can push some services into um, maybe a, a function as opposed to managing services. Um, the other thing that's helped me that may help you in these interview processes is, is something that's not talked about a lot, but, you know, maybe you're given a particular task. Uh, perhaps you should turn that uh, as opposed to building something out yourself, um, suggesting a managed service uh, instead of you know, building something out from, from the ground up, you know, if of course the budget allows for that at that organization, uh, that's really a big one. That's one that's helped me out a lot. And I mean, for the business's benefit, kept the team size realistic, you know, especially if you're at a bootstrapped company, uh, you know, if you're funding, funding strapped, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> a lot of times budget, it's a big deal. You know, it's something that's not talked about uh, in, in some of the, you know, these interview prep videos that I've, I've watched as well. Um, moving along into more of like the language kind of thing, uh, you know, what is your experience with software engineering in general? You know, what are, what type of code are you writing? Are you writing scripts? Uh, you know, what language are you familiar with? A lot of these organizations specifically for SRE and test now as well, you know, they're looking for experience with a language. Uh, oftentimes you might see three, <laughs> so just be familiar with one. I don't know anyone personally that is an expert in three languages. I have never met them, and I, I've worked with a lot of people. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well. So be familiar with the language. Python, Go, Rust, you know, these are, these are languages uh, that I hear thrown around in the infrastructure world. Um, I'm going to create a video on as to what that actually means in SRE. <laughs> so you don't have to be an expert in those languages. You know, what is an expert? There's all these questions that I can dive into uh, in that alone, which is a different video. Um, but it's something that, that should be talked about and you should be prepared for uh, to discuss as well. And sometimes, like I said, you might see Java thrown around there. Maybe that's a language that they use uh, as their back end. So it's something to be familiar with um, as well. Uh, another thing as well just, uh, to be familiar with is, is the on-call rotation process, kind of like the more SRE type stuff, uh, game days, uh, fault injection, chaos engineering, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so these are things to be familiar with. Um, you know, you don't have to go in depth on it because a lot of this kind of stuff you might learn or they're, hopefully you already have a process in place. You know, if you're put in the position where you have to put create that process, you know, you're, you've gone beyond 
you know, in SRE. Now you're a senior or a lead, you know, and you should really uh, make that apparent if you're building out those processes um, because you're doing a lot of work outside of work, <laughs> talking to other people, um, you know, defining these processes for that organization, especially if it's for a small company. Um, but that's these are things to be familiar with. Uh, run books, that's a big deal. You know, if something goes wrong, what do you do about it? And then getting into it as well. If something goes wrong, you know, how are you finding out that something has gone wrong? And that dives into this process of observability, uh, this huge, huge, huge thing where once again, it can be an entirely different video, um, but it's it's back in the day, they refer to it you know, as monitoring and this kind of evolved into a much, much, much larger thing. And then <laughs> I'm not gonna say company names, but some companies, one particular company had mentioned observability, observability, and, and, and ran with this and defined it and made amazing blog posts and videos on this. Then other organizations kind of uh, took this and, and sold that. <laughs> so that's another, another thing to check out if you want to dive into that rabbit hole. Um, it's super interesting. Um, but that's that's kind of like you know some of the technical things you're going to run into um, based on my experience. Once again, in my context, small to medium-sized companies. Uh, and recruiters reaching out to me, you know, they give me a list of requirements, you know, this is what so-and-so are looking for, infrastructure as code and automation and toil and some languages and cloud and responding to events and, you know, on-call rotation and stress. Uh, so these are some of the things that you're going to be asked. If I missed anything, because I, I, you know, this is totally freestyled, uh, so I just kind of ran with it based on what I know and what I've dealt with uh, over, the, over the years. And I haven't really been doing this a whole lot, <laughs> a really a long time, um, so that's something to keep in mind. But yeah, if I missed anything, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, if there's anything you want me to dive into specifically, uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll jump into it. All right, everyone, stay safe. Peace.